Hey, Jane. <laughs> hey, Em. <laughs> Welcome to another practice time with Jamie. And Amy. Today is um, our first round diving into systemic family therapy. Very excited about this. And we're going to be working with um, avoiding triangulation. Also really excited about this exercise. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. Triangulation. Um, this is from the Systemic Family Therapy APA book. Um, and it's exercise five, if you're following along in that. Mm -hmm. Amy, anything you want to share about your experiences with triangulation before we jump in. I mean, it's just, it's such a loaded topic. There's so much to be said. <laughs> yes, I, I'm deep breathing because I have a lot of experience with triangulation. Um, so my understanding of it is when there's anxiety, stress, tension in a dyad, in two people, in a relationship or parent-child, then to alleviate some of that anxiety, there's a way people can rope in a third person. So like literally make, <laughs> that's my best triangle, a triangle. Um, and so as the therapist, that happens when clients are having anxiety or tension, and then they rope you in as the third kind of point of that triangle to diffuse some of their anxiety onto you. And like, boy, is that enticing. It's just so easy to kind of step into that triangle. You said that so perfectly. That was flawless. Um, and I really lo love your um, triangle, right? We're therapists. We're not like geometry folk, um, but that was great. <laughs> and um, yeah, that pull can be really like magnetic almost like the visual that comes to me. It's um, like a fish, the fisherman, when you hook, throw the line and then you hook the fish and reel it in. I mean, like they'll try, like clients will really, that, that pull of reeling you in can be really strong. Um, and sometimes it can be more over and sometimes it can be a little bit more subtle. So you really, really got to keep an, keep an eye for it, whether it's in like a couple relationship or whether it's between parent and child, whether it's between siblings, like in all kinds of relational dynamics, um, you got to keep an eye peeled for triangulation. Yeah. So Amy, how do you feel about being my therapist today? I feel great about it. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's take a look at this criteria. So first, uh, we have demonstrate empathy towards the idea being expressed by the client. Mm -hmm. Next, we have redirect the focus back to the primary dyadic relationship or where the stress is. And last, ask an open-ended question that keeps the focus on actionable ways to improve the primary dyadic relationship. Take deep breaths. Um, mm -hmm. I'm ready. When my partner and I fight, I usually end up going to my car and calling my brother because at least he understands me. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's really hard when you and your partner are fighting. Um, and I hear that you're, it sounds like you're, you feel more understood by your brother um, talking to him. Um, but I wonder, um, yeah, I wonder if you could tell me more about what's going on in your relationship with your partner. Awesome. Great. How'd that feel for you? Mm, medium. Mm -hmm. Medium. Um, criteria one, you definitely met that by expressing that empathy and like, I, I felt validated in like an understood in you um, saying that like, it seems like my, I feel like my brother understands me. And you met criteria two by redirecting back to my romantic relationship, that primary relationship. Criteria three, ask an open-ended question, open question that keeps the focus on actionable ways to improve the primary dyadic relationship. 
I think you can improve that one a little bit because you brought the attention back to asking me about that relationship. But this piece of um, actionable ways to improve that relationship, that's something I think you could maybe work on if you gave it another try. Agreed. Yeah, okay. When my partner and I fight, I usually end up going to my car and calling my brother because at least he understands me. Hmm. It sounds like when you fight with your partner, you don't always feel understood. And, uh, and so you go to your car and, and talk to your brother who, who feels more understanding. Um, but I'd, I'd love to know a little more about um, the fighting that goes on with you and your partner and any ways you think you might be able to decrease that, those fights. Good. Now, how did that one feel compared to the one before it? Not perfect, but I think I met criteria better. Agreed. Um, criteria one, you met that by empathizing with the client. Criteria two, met that, bringing it back to that primary relationship. And this time you did a better job with criteria three of focusing on an, an actionable way to improve that relationship um, with that, that little change that you made at the end. So I thought that was uh, definitely better. We're going to go a little harder this time. I'm ready. I really need your advice. My partner and I had a huge blow up this weekend and he said some really mean things. Now he's pretending that everything is okay, but I'm still really hurting. What should I do? Mm. Wow. Yeah. I really hear that you're really hurt by this fight you got in with your partner um, and that you're really looking for, for for guidance from me here. Um, but I think I would be curious to know um, more about what's going on with you and your partner. Um, and I wonder if, um, if there are ways that you're expressing some of this hurt with him. Mm, okay. <laughs> How was that? I don't know. Your face tells me. I bumbled through it a bit. Yeah, I thought it was good. Let's check back with criteria. Definitely my criteria one. That one's always, empathy is just a breeze for you. It's just like inherently in your nature. But yes, met criteria one there. Criteria two, you brought it back to that relationship. Criteria three, this open-ended question that focuses on an actionable way to improve the relationship. I think, I think you pretty much got there, right? You asked me as the client, if there are things that I do, or like, if I, if I bring these feelings to my partner, right. Mm -hmm. It was something along those lines. Yeah. So it was like asking me if there, if this is an actionable step that I take in my relationship. So I think you met all, all criteria on that one. All right. We'll go for that one in a second. I really need your advice. My partner and I had a huge blow up this weekend and he said some really mean things. And now he's pretending that everything is okay, but I'm still really hurting. What should I do? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I, I really hear how hurt you are in this fight and with your partner. And I hear your ask of me to give you some advice here. Um, but I don't actually think that's, my role to, to give advice. And I wonder instead if um, I'd like to explore more about this fight with your partner. And I'm wondering um, how you're able to communicate the hurt with him. That is the same thing I just said the first time. No, <laughs> I really, really like that. So um, going over the criteria first, Yes, met criteria one, met criteria two, bringing it back to the dyadic relationship, met criteria three by focusing on um, asking the client about an actionable way to improve that relationship, right? Me bringing the feelings to my partner. And I also really liked that you were a little bit more direct with the client in this case, right? Because this was an example like of heavy, like heavy triangulation. Like I'm trying to pull you in, like help me, save me take on some of this for me and you were more directly and you know very um uh like empathically but also firm of like that's not that's not really my role 
but here's, here's how I can help. Tell me about this. Um, I just love how you, how you approach that a little bit more directly. Can we, yeah. Can we check out the example response for that one? Mm-hmm. I really need your advice. My partner and I had a huge blow up this weekend. He said some really mean things. Now he's pretending that everything is okay, but I'm still really hurting. What should I do? And the example response says, it sounds like it was a rough week and you're still hurting. What do you think would be the best way for you and your partner to work through this? Okay, good. good. Concise, redirect. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, simple, clear, concise. And very similar to the open-end question that you asked about, um, you know, shifting the attention back to the partnership and actionable steps. Cool. Let's level up. All right. I feel like you can like see the mischief on my face when we got a really good one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ready? I can't believe you just said that. Yes, my partner and I had this massive blow up this weekend, but you're talking to me like it's my fault. It is not at all my fault. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I hear that, that my response really didn't land well with you. Um, and I would really like to know more about this fight that's that you're naming between you and your partner. And how you think that they added to the fight. So yes, met criteria one, demonstrating empathy. Yes, met criteria two, redirecting the focus back to the relationship. Criteria three, you definitely met the first part asking that open-ended question. I'm just not sure that that one was an actionable way to improve the relationship. I think we could improve upon that a little bit more if you gave that another try. What do you think? I, okay. I can't believe you just said that. Yes, my partner and I had this massive blow up this past weekend, but you're talking like it's my fault. It is not all my fault. Mm, yeah, I really hear you, Jamie, that my, my response really didn't land well with you. Um, and, I, and I am wondering about this massive fight you're talking about um, and wondering if there are ways you think that um, you and your partner could have less of these massive fights. What do you think of just checking the example one for that real quick? Yes. I'm curious. All right. I can't believe you just said that. Yes, my partner and I had this massive blow up this weekend, but you're talking like it is all my fault. It's not all my fault. And the example response says, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to take his side, but can see how it may have come across that way. My goal is to help you both repair this rather than worrying about judging who is right or wrong. Any thoughts on how you might start to overcome this? Good. So that sounded like very similar to what you said, just maybe like a little bit like, like meteor. How was this for you as the therapist? You know, it wasn't easy. It, it feels a little hard to redirect, um, to redirect and then ask a question. Um, because even just in this practice, I did feel kind of this reaction of like, oof, like you're really trying to like put this on me or bring me in. And so there are kind of a lot of steps to like not buy into that, um, put it back on the client and then ask a good question. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't easy, but I liked it. I felt like it was actually really good practice to not get so pulled in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with this, while I think the criteria were, were very clear and, 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 and super solid, avoiding triangulation is also something that there feels like a lot of nuance beyond the criteria that really just comes from being in those uncomfortable situations and like having to, um, having to adapt from there. Yeah. Which is even more helpful to have the criteria, right? Like you're yeah. like nuanced and relational and complicated. Mm -hmm. And this helps in those really complicated, um, 
triangulation situations mm-hmm. to just be like, okay, I have some criteria that I know how to navigate this. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for checking out another practice time. If any, if any of you, any therapists watching have your own uh, amusing triangulation experiences that you would feel, you know, comfortable sharing and you'd like to drop those in the comments, please feel free. Um, you know, sometimes it's just really helpful to know that like somebody else has had similar struggles and it just makes you, you <laughs> reminds you that you're still doing, doing good work. Um, and that it's not just you or we're, we're all in this together as a mental health community. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for checking out another practice time with Amy and Jamie, and we'll see you next time. Bye.